through his blood even the forgiveness of sins. And the Bible says he hath loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. The blood of Adam in our gives us a sinful nature. It separates us from God. It brings death to the flesh. But the blood of Jesus Christ bridges the gap between a sinful man and a holy God. And the Lord Jesus Christ lays his hand upon sinful man and his hand upon a holy God and reconciles them both within himself. There was a time when Job said, There is not a daysman betwixt us that he might lay his hand upon us both. But now there is a mediator. And his blood is on the mercy seat in heaven tonight. Still just as powerful as it was two, almost 2,000 years ago. If you're here tonight and you have sin, you've never been saved. If you're a Christian, you're burdened with sin. And you've gone away from God. His blood is still available. And if you'll come and confess your sins, he's faithful and just, and he'll forgive you of all your unrighteousness. Thank God for that. Let's bow our heads for prayer and ask the Lord's blessing on the service. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you tonight for the privilege, for the opportunity to assemble ourselves together in this place of worship. Lord, you don't live in this building tonight. You live in our heart. And our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And Lord, we ask you tonight, Lord, the gift of God that is within us, may it be stirred up tonight. I pray that you'd bless Brother Ed as he preaches, bless the singing, bless the invitation. If there's one in our midst that's never been saved, may they be saved. May your people tonight be stirred and revived and encouraged and drawn close to you. Father, we thank you tonight for the Savior, for his precious blood shed on the cross for our sins. Thank you for the blood atonement that's been made. And Father, again tonight, bless this service. Use it for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. Let's turn to page 
Amen. Let's turn to page 159. Does everybody stand on this one? This will be our last congregational hymn. <laughs> you listen to the words and let it speak to your heart. This song has a message in it. And you listen to the third 237. <laughs> All right. Let's sing the first now. I Let me welcome all of the visitors tonight to the service. Good to have each one of you. And I hope you'll try to come back another night this week and be with us in meeting here at this church. How many preachers we got here tonight? I, I think I know just about all of them, but how many How many's here tonight? How many of you fellows are preachers? If you're not ashamed of it, raise your hand. <laughs> well, that's uh, five, six. That's a pretty good many. But it's good to have each one of you men of God here tonight. I want you to pray for our revival this week. Pray that God will stir this church and this community. We don't want to just have a series of meetings, but we want to see people saved and God's people revived. All right, I'm going to ask Brother Ed to come at this time, bring the message. Thank you, Brother David. I had a good time last night. I don't know about you, but I had a good time. Amen. How many of you got blessed last night? Amen. Got the little book that we had last night. Uh, I told him last night that picture is good for framing or farming. More farming than framing, amen. This book here, I hope it'll be a blessing to you for a little offering love gift of two dollars and a half. And if you've printed any lately or got any printing done, you know that's not a money making proposition. And if you don't have any money and you want one of them, just help yourself. Nobody will say a thing or think anything about it. I want to say something to you tonight, and I want you to listen to me carefully. As you know, the Rock of Ages Ministries is a work of faith and a labor of love. Uh, we have our missionaries that labor in prisons. Now, it takes real men to do that kind of work. I mean, 
uh, it's easy just to go in and, and maybe spend a little time and go out. But I mean, when you stay in there eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, facing every demon the devil can throw at you, and I mean everything the devil can throw at you, takes a real man, real, real man. And I want you to pray for these men. I really mean that. And then, too, we uh, have our printing operation that supplies our men with the supplies they need. Anything they need don't cost them a dime. It's given to them. But now here's where I want to ask you to pray. My brother Bobby uh, is the director of printing, gave up his church, felt like the Lord wanted him to come full-time into that ministry and uh, take charge of the printing and take that load off of me. I, you know, you can just so many things you can do. And I had more on me, and he's come to us, and he's working with us full time. And he's out raising up his deputation, his support, trying to raise his support. And any missionary nowadays, because there's a few rotten apples in the barrel, any good missionary would have a hard time. Because I'm going to tell you, preachers, now you can get mad at this if you want to, but you better check your missionary list and see if they're getting the job done. Amen? Amen. Uh, I'm sorry to tell you this. There are some that said they're missionaries sitting around drawing your money and not doing a dime's worth of work. And that's wrong. That's stealing. I don't care what you say. And God will judge a man like that. I believe if you send a dime to a missionary, it's a holy responsibility. Amen? And old Bob's having a rough time. I mean that. Uh, I was talking to the office today, and they said, it looked like unless God works a miracle, he may lose his home, but he's going to keep on going. I may lose his home. You know it takes money to live for a missionary. Amen. I don't care what nobody said. I'm not trying to pour him out for my brother. I'd hate to see him lose his home. And it said, said look like they said, I may have to trade down for a car, an older car. And he's got nearly 100,000 miles on the one he's got. And I want you to pray tonight. We need, I need some pastors that will contact him. Bob is a real preacher, isn't he? He came here and preached. I believe he had five say the time he came here and preached. And I wish you'd help me get him some churches to get in. He's pastored all these years, and not a lot of folks know him. And I need some churches that will invite him in. And uh, If they can't even take him on, why, he's a good preacher. He'll bless your people. And they can receive an offering for him and help him a little bit. And he's a good, faithful man of God. And I'm not afraid to recommend him. And I know he's clean, and I know he lives for God. I know he walks with God. I know he's got a good, clean family. One son's a preacher, and the other's a deacon. And his daughter married a preacher. Amen? And uh, you start talking ugly about him, I'll climb up on your roof and tie your shingles off. I know him. I mean, I, I he's... Uh, Thirteen years younger than me. I babysitted for him. Now, if he acts a little strange sometimes, well, one time I had him up on my shoulders, carried him, dropped him off, and hit the ground. Amen? <laughs> so he may w wobble a little bit every once in a while. But I'm as serious as a heart attack. I want you to pray. Uh, I made some contacts this afternoon. Maybe relieve the pressure just a little bit. But I'd like you to pray. I honestly mean that. I'd hate to see him lose his home. I really mean that. And you'd, if it was you, you'd hate to see that too, wouldn't you? For yourself. So let's make it a matter of prayer tonight. Uh, I don't. I'm not. I don't hesitate to recommend him at all. And if you just know a church that would uh, have old Bob come in and preach, he'll be a blessing to him. You know he will. And uh, I'd thank you for it. Encountered a personal way. If he, if he has to. Uh, do that, and if well, let's just consider he had to go on a job right now. I need him badly, very, very badly. I don't need the print shop shut down. It needs to be going. So you help me pray about that. How many make that a matter of prayer? I mean tonight. And uh, God speaks to your heart about something, somebody to call, some preacher to call. Say, preacher, have this man in. Let him preach for you. He'll be a blessing to you. Glad to have all you preachers tonight. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad to see all of you. I want you to open your Bibles to the book of St. Matthew. Now, I'm going to read a verse and have to do, I, I don't think I'll have to explain for everybody, but I will explain for those that needs to be explained to, and that's not to make you look ignorant. 
Uh, you know, it's just maybe you don't know what I'm about to say. It's not make me smart or you ignorant, but it's just something I think you ought to know. Get some things in the right perspective. You know, let me say this before I read it. Uh, it's a sad man today that thinks, now there's a lesson to be learned and a lesson to be had from the Bible, any of it. But all Scripture is not given to me personally, nor to me as a, as a Gentile. Uh, there's, there's Scripture written to specified people and groups and nations. And you better not try to make some scriptures fit you. Amen? <laughs> You'll be in the office mess you ever got in your life. You'll be so fouled up doctrine, you don't know which way to go. And don't try. Don't try. I say don't try. I was talking to a fellow one day, and he was talking to me about keeping the Sabbath. Well, I said, I didn't know you was a Jew. Well, he said, I'm not. Well, I said, the Sabbath never was given to the Gentile, amen. amen. Never was. Amen. Never was. And you start messing around. I hear folks get down to pray and say, Lord, thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day. Well, uh, Sunday's not the Sabbath. So don't try to apply always every scripture to you and to us as Gentiles. Now, with that in mind, I want to read from Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. And I'm just going to read one verse there. And it has to do with what I'm going to preach in, in some fashion. But it's simply to set in order some things so you won't get mixed up as I go through the message. In verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now, you're going to be in a mess if you try to apply that to us today. You'll get, you'll, uh, you'll have to discard the grace of God. You'll have to discard the preaching of the cross. You'll have to throw out the wind. Whoa! I, I like to, I like to trim the devil up when he tries to throw a curve. Amen. I want to say to you tonight, with, with no hesitation in my heart, that I'm not saved, nor was I saved, nor shall I be saved, enduring. Amen. Amen. I am not. I will not. And I have not. Amen. I'm saved by grace through faith. Right. Amen. Amen. And I feel some preaching turning over down in there. Amen. And if I wasn't so dignified, I'd preach a while. Amen. Amen. Now you're set, preacher. What about that? What about that? There'll be a day it'll be in perfect perspective. A time when it'll be in perfect action. Amen. But don't you try to lay that on me. Amen. Don't you try that. I, I've been big. I've learned how to read, and I know better. Amen. But now with that in mind and that explanation, I want to call your attention, if you will, please, to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And I want to read some there. And uh, just stay with me tonight. I want to be a blessing to you if I can. I want to address ourselves to part of that scripture that I read, a word, a particular word that was in that verse, but with a perfectly and absolutely and entirely different setting. Amen? Now, the Bible said in Paul talking to that young preacher, Timothy, and I like the way Paul starts out. He said, Thou therefore... My son. You said, well, Paul wasn't even married. Well, now that's, uh, that's debatable, too. That's debatable. I know he was a member of the Sanhedrin. And if you start checking out and find out who could be a member of that, Paul sure had to get a lot of pull to get in there if he wasn't, amen? 
Uh, don't start arguing with me now. I can tell by looking at you, you won't argue about that. Amen. And I'm not interested in arguing with you. Thou therefore, my son, Paul had begotten our one Timothy, our brought him to the Savior. Amen. And that made him his son in the Lord. <laughs> mm. I, sometimes I'll just let me slow down and preach. Other times I slobber on five rows. Amen. Amen. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others. Now there's two messages in here. And I'm going to try to keep from preaching both of them tonight and just preach one of them. But he said, Thou therefore, Thou therefore endure, and that word's in right, 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 it's, it's the right where it ought to be right there. Amen. Therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Our Father, help us tonight. Lord, make our tongue a ready writer's pen. God, may we speak, dear Lord, the words that would glorify thy name and edify the church. And we'll thank you and praise you in the blessed name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. Now, notice, if you will, one of the great pitfalls of the Christian today is some misinformation that's been floating around that somehow you get saved and just kind of coast right on into heaven and it'll just be a flowery bed of ease all the way. Somebody has been peddling you a bunch of lies. I want to serve notice on you the day you get born again, washed in the blood, you have an adversary, my friend, a devil that's on your trail. Amen. Now, I worry about that man that said, well, the devil never bothers me. I want to say to you, friend of mine, every morning when I tie my shoes, I know old Slewfoot or one of his boys is going to dog my trail down the road. And Paul knew that. He said, son, I want you to endure hardness. I want to tell you, Timothy, there's some hard spots that you're going to reach. And you might as well find out, son, there are some things that's not going to go away. Amen. I see folks saying, well, I tell you, I'm going to quit. I'm just going to quit. I want to tell you, friend of mine, you better think that over too. Now this word endure, look at it. It means to last. It means to suffer patiently. It means to bear up under. <laughs> Woo! It means to tolerate. He said, Son, I want to tell you something, Timothy. There are some things that's going to hit you, and you might as well find out now. You're just going to have to put up with them. Amen. 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 Paul, you say, well, how did Paul know that? One day Paul woke up and said, Lord, God, i got a thorn in me. Yeah. I've got a thorn in me. I better have prayer about it. He said, Lord, I've got me a thorn in the flesh, and I want you to take it away. He said, my soul is still there. He prayed again. He said, still there. Three times he went to God in the behalf of that thorn. And God said, Paul, I'm not going to take it away. I'm going to let you keep it. I'm going to let you keep it. Oh, friend. But he said, my grace will be sufficient for you. Hallelujah. Now, you're going to shout, you better do it now. Endure some things. Some things that ain't going to go away. If you think you're going to hide your eyes and say, 
Oh, ain't he it can't hide over? You're out of kids' games, honey. You're on a real battleground, and the devil's your enemy. And my friend, as long as you live for God, he is going to dog your trail, and you might as well learn it. You might as well endure it. Amen. You said, I thought you enjoyed it. Yes, sir. But my friend, I'm saying this and using that word in the right context. There's some things that you might as well know now is not going to go away. Amen. God's not going to knock all the bumps and the rough places down and give you smooth sailing. Those, those valleys can be the best thing in the world that ever happened to you. Amen. God help a man. I, I, I'd hate to pastor a church. Or everybody had it just easy. It'd be a church that didn't pray. You know when your best praying will be done? When some of that family's in the hospital and the doctors have tried all the wonder drugs on them. When that little old baby's running the temperature and it won't come down. You say, why do you think old Bob's doing tonight? He's got his head stuck up there in the corner of the room praying. Looks like he's going to lose his home and his car. And he wants to do something for God. You said, well, what does that mean? Old Bob will come out of the corner a better man. Amen. Amen, brother. That's right. Amen. No, you said, oh, God, smooth out the road. Get rid of all the bumps. said, I ain't going to do it. Just endure it. Amen. Amen. Put up with it. Bear up on it. Tolerate it. Amen. And I'm just getting started. Stay with me. Yes, sir. There's some things you're going to have to endure. But notice what Paul said. He said, endure hardness. You say, what does that mean? Just what it said. There's some hard spots for you down the road. I mean, they're, they're good for you. I mean, they're real. You don't enjoy them, but they're good for you. But notice what Paul said. And here's that second message, and I'll try not to get into it. He said, endure hardness as a good soldier. A good soldier. And there's, I, I, Lord, help me not to get all that in tonight. Amen. But I want to say to you, friend of mine, I'm sick and tired of that crowd. <laughs> <laughs> May the next time you pick your nose and look about you. <laughs> Amen. Bless him, God. I'm sick of these whiners and belly acres. I'm sick of these grumblers and complainers. That is constant. I don't know why. <laughs> Just endure hard. Put up with it. Learn it's going to be there. It's going to be there. It's not going away. As long as the devil's here, them hard spots will be here. Amen. You say, couldn't God take them away? Yes, but he'll let them happen. Paul said, there was given to me. A thorn in the flesh to Amen. buffet me. He said it was a messenger of Satan. Amen. Now, I want to tell you something. God, God, and never even informed Job about it or asked him what he thought about it. God turned the devil loose on him. Amen. And he never went into conference with Job and said, Now, Job, Kind of straighten up. The devil's going to hit you. I believe you can take it. He never even told Job nothing about it. Right, right, right. Never asked him nothing about it. Said, there he is, devil, sick him. Yeah. <laughs> Amen, brother. Amen. He said, I wonder why I'm having this rough. <laughs> Has somebody took a patty pie? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you got a hangnail, ain't you? Rough? Having it rough? No. We're having it good. Amen. Amen. 
wonder what Paul would have done if he walked up here and said, David, what's this? <laughs> Amen, brother. David said, thermostat, Paul. Thermostat? What's that for? Yeah. Did you hear that little humming? Oh, yeah. It makes it cool in here. Paul would have said, you're kidding. <laughs> I never did have one of them in jail. <laughs> Can you imagine Paul walking around feeding these people? That's right, brother. Oh, Lord. What? That's right, brother. Amen. Would you have the nerve to walk up to Paul and say, Man, I'm having a run. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 Paul would ask you, said, let me see your back to see how you've been whipped. Yeah. Amen. 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 Paul would have said, Did you just get off a shipwreck crew? <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you, what you're going through can be for your good and God's glory. Amen. Yeah. Endure hardness. Put up with it. Tolerate it. Stand up under it. You said, I want God to take it away. God may not take it away. God may know you need it. God may hold your feet to the fire a while. Amen? It may be a test you're going through. And there may be some things in your life you'll have to put up with the rest of your life. You may never see the light out from under it. Amen? Some of you right now are thinking of some things in your life. You said, you mean reckon I really will have to put up with it? Yeah, you asked him to marry you, didn't you? Don't look everybody up for one mistake. Or if you look in your eyes, you see there ain't nobody home. <laughs> there are some mistakes I don't see how nobody makes. <laughs> Endure it. Put up with it. Well, you said, I'm going to look awful sad while I'm doing it. Now, wait a minute. I'll get over that in a few minutes. But I'm going to take my time before I get to that. I've got a few more things I want to share with you. He said, endure hardness. Endure it. I mean, stand up under it. But he said, it's a good soldier. Now, here's the second message. And I ain't going to give you fellas that outline before I get to preach it down here. Amen. I know preach. Boy, you just spot a preacher on an outline. He'll grab it. And put a copyright on it. Amen. And I ain't going to let you fellas have it till I get to preach it. For Endure hardness. Then secondly, Hebrews 12 and 7, he said endure chastisement. Endure chastisement. You said, no, I don't see why God's doing me this way. All right. Let's just turn, if you will, to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. And read some there. And uh, see what God's doing this for. Hebrews chapter 12. And let's begin reading, if you will, in verse 7. If you endure chastisement, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he, what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? Now go up to verse 3. For considering him, consider him, that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself, Lest you be wary and faint in your minds, ye have not resisted under blood, striving against sin, and ye have forgotten, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaks unto you 
as unto children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor feign when you are rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourges every son whom he receive. And verse 7 said, If you endure chastisement, God dealeth with you as with sons. I will say to you, Ray, I live in God's tied me up to the whipping post and laid it on me. And I pray, O oh God, help me to endure it. And by the hundred, I know you've given me what I need. And I want to do it like a son. Amen. God don't just all of a sudden think I'll give somebody a whipping. I just feel like whipping somebody. God don't do that. I believe I'll whip me to a third. When grab God grabs you by the nap of the neck. I know if you tell Bob I said this out of the night. Bobby, you still remember when Daddy or Mama started to get a hold of him. Before they ever hit him a lick, he starts screaming, I won't do it no more. <laughs> and Bob had one, all I know he's going to be a preacher then. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but I know this. God has chastened me. Now, I, there's a lot in that, Ray. I, I know I'm his son. I know I am. Amen. Now you said, now Brother Blue, do you enjoy the chastening? No. But I know he's doing it for my good. My daddy. My daddy, bless his memory, he's in heaven now. But I never will forget, and I may have told the share, I'm not sure. Daddy told me one morning, said when I come in tonight, I want the wood box full and kindling in the box. I got to play it and forgot it. <laughs> I just forgot it. They knew he was lying about it. I forgot it. Daddy came in that night and there wasn't no kindling. And there wasn't no wood in the box. He said, where's the kindling and where's the wood? I know, do I know he was lying? I said, I forgot it. He said, come on out here, son. He said, you and I are going to have to have a talk. <laughs> that was the one side of this conversation. <laughs> Daddy pulled up a sprout or a sapling, it would almost make salt him. <laughs> and he pushed me out about arm's length. And I heard that bush coming through the air going, shh. <laughs> and he made contact on the lower part of my anatomy. <clears throat> and he just kept on doing it. And he said, son, I'm doing this because I love you. And I said, if you love it, why don't you quit? You're going to kill me. <laughs> but from that day to this, I am now the world's champion kindling cutter. If they had a contest in the Olympics for cutting kindling, all the rest of them might as well give up. I done got it. Amen. Amen. I can just be driving down the road and see an old tree that I think is kind of rich and pine ladder, and I'm going to have to fight myself to keep and stop and it up. <laughs> you said, now what brought that back? My daddy would chase me. Amen. Amen. You said, what good does God chase and do? It'll make me straighten up and fly right. Amen. Amen. I'm preaching the truth, brother. Amen, Amen. brother. Yes, brother. Amen. Now, he said, don't despise it. Don't despise it. Did you ever know when you was a kid that you had one coming? Daddy had a strange way of doing things. Every once in a while, I'd do something maybe on Wednesday. And he'd look around at me with them. Daddy was a, a Cherokee. He'd look at me with them eyes and said, I'll, I'll whip you next Wednesday at 4 o'clock. <laughs> oh, my soul. Oh, God. 
all week long. I have to <laughs> and you talk about praying that week. I pray, oh God, wipe it from his mind. <laughs> Don't let it in me. <laughs> and then to add insult to injury, a week later on Wednesday, He'd go out about two o'clock and come back with a hip crash. Oh, no. <laughs> and would set it up in the corner. <laughs> and make me come in the living room and sit down and look at it. <laughs> Amen. And he'd walk over and get that hickory and bend it. You like it? No. Enjoy it? No. But it bore good fruit. Amen. I walk down through the penitentiary halls now and see young men that didn't have a daddy like mine. They didn't have somebody that loved me and said no sometimes. And when I broke his law, he saw that I remi was reminded that I broke it. I see those young men that didn't know what discipline was, that didn't know what stern uh, discipline was. Now then, many of them are awaiting the electric chair. But Daddy said, boy, I'd whip you for that. Our Heavenly Father. I think there's a special crowd. God can give the ministry of suffering. There's some folks that they can take a cold. And they'll whine and growl and groan. That's true. Amen. But now last week before they took that cold, they stood up in church and said, I'm getting home to pray. <laughs> I didn't want to see Jesus. I didn't. I just. I just. I just. I just. But they take a cold, and they'll run over fourteen cars getting the spice. Hey, if they want to see Jesus, why don't they jump out of the car and run over another car? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> we're blind, my dog. Hey, hey, brother. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> now to get up for that. Amen, brother. Endure affliction. What I'm saying and what God's Word is saying, I believe when these things come along, we may not enjoy them, and we may suffer, and we may be in pain, but I believe there's a way to conduct ourselves in these situations. Amen. I believe the world hears us with our lying, how we want to go to heaven, and how we want to see Jesus, and they know we're lying too. Amen. It don't take a smart man to figure that you're lying, then. Amen. Amen. You're a human being, you want to live as long as you can. That's right. Yes. 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 There's a few folks, God knows them and said, I'm going to give them the ministry of suffering. Remember one time years ago now, I was in Revival, I think in Missouri, somewhere I can't remember. A lady came up to us one day and said, Preacher, would you go see my mama? She said, she's 90 years old. She fell and broke her hip two or three years ago, and she's heard your takes, and she's never met you, and she said, she's bed fast. And she wants to see you while you're in this country if you can. And I said, I'll go see her. I never will forget. She was staying with one of her daughters out in the country, and I went over there that day, and me and the pastor. And we got to the house, and the daughter met us and said, uh, said uh, Mama's having her time of prayer, and we don't want to disturb her. And said, you can tiptoe if you'll be real quiet in here at the door where she's at. Now, David, I have never had anything like that happen in my life. They led us to the room, all the room was so clean. 
Let us in there that hospital bed, which is just clean, pretty. But I saw something that day that I know now what this means. Let's endure this affliction. When we walked into the room, every available inch on that wall was covered up in prayer cards and pictures of kids and families. And she had her that turned her over with her face to the wall. And she goes over those pictures of dead she's in heaven now. Every one of those people, she had their names memorized. And she called them all their names. I stood there listening to her pray, I guess, for 45 minutes. And she never asked God for nothing for a second. She never said, Lord, heal my hip. She never said, Lord, get me up out of this bed. But all of a sudden, I looked right over in front of her face and that bed on that wall, and there was my picture. She didn't know I said that there. And she said, Lord, I've never met Brother Blue. I've heard his tapes. But God, I want you to I want you to bless him. Lord, I just want you to pour heaven at him. And God was already doing it. He was about to drown. And all of a sudden I couldn't stand it no more. And I started shouting. Because I saw what God was saying. Just endure affliction, bow upon it. Stand up on it patiently. That old slave was lying there. An affliction was in her body. But she was enduring it and enjoying the time of God. Amen. 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 Started shouting and she looked over and said, Brother Blue, come here, honey. I want to kiss you and give you sugar. She started hugging my neck and we both started shouting. I never did hear her complain and grumble or belly. She was enduring it. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I wish I'd get church members to see this. Your pastor would be the happiest man that ever was. Complainers and grumblers and belly acres. Our churches are full of them and sinners come in and they work with you on the job and they hear you complain all the time. They hear you grumble and complain and bellyache all the time. And then he's turned around and have the nerve and the gall and the audacity. Said, oh, it's just sweet to live for the Lord. He just blesses me and he does. But if you're going to do any complaining, don't do it in front of the world. Don't do that. It's a bad place to do it. Amen. And next of all, we're to endure persecution. Hello? Amen. We're going to get over where the rubber meets the road now, Ray. Open your Bibles, please, to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10. Through twelve. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life and purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, and patience. Persecution, afflictions, which came to me at Iconium, Antioch, and Iconium, and Lystra. What persecutions I endured. But out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Amen. Now, wait a minute. Stay with me. You said, oh, well, preacher, I thought you said some things I have to put up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Stay with me now. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Amen. Well, you said God said he delivered Paul. Yeah, from that situation, from those situations. But I believe, listen, if you want to get out of persecution, stop living godly. Because as long as you live godly, you're going to suffer persecution. Amen. 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 You said, I want it to stop. Then start living like the devil. The devil quit persecuting. He'll quit lying on you. Amen. Amen. They'll quit talking about it. Man. They'll quit saying things about you. You don't want persecution. Start living a wild, loose life. But that won't pass you. Amen. Amen. If you're going to live for God, and I believe Paul kept on living for God, don't you? Amen. Amen. Out of all those things that Paul just mentioned, he said, God took care of that. 
But I mean, you kept living for God. He said, I'll call it good fight. I kept the faith. I finished the court. And I believe every step of that battleground. I believe the devil will try to be struggling. I'm going to say this, and I'm not saying I'm not saying it, and you, you won't hear me grumbling about it. I mean, listen to me. I, I don't like persecution no better than nobody else, but I'm not going to start living for the world. Now, I'm going to say this. And it's not to brag on sin. I'm not doing that. There's a preacher that's fallen. I want you to pray for him. I love him. I preached revivals for him. I preached the night his little old girl got saved. Preached. I've never harmed that man. I've harmed you. I've never said an evil word about him. Never harm him away in my life. Never lifted my hand or my tongue again. He's fallen. I pray for him. I really have. I believe the Bible said, if I be one among you overtaken the fault, you with your spiritual restore such a one spirit. I've prayed for him. But for some reason, unbeknownst to me, and I know it's him, good men that I know, he's told them things, and they've come right straight to me and told me it was him. Now then, I've tracked him down, and I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he's telling some of the ugliest, ugliest things on me you could ever imagine. I've never harmed him a lot. He told recently that I was in the selling dope. He told recently that I owned in Knoxville, Tennessee. Look at that. Now, I'm not blushing. I'm... I'm not guilty. God knows I'm not. It's something that the devil. See, the devil don't care whether it's truth or not. He can just lie. He don't care whether it's truth or not. Because some of you are sitting there that you don't believe anything. Amen. Amen. So I own in Knoxville, Tennessee, a topless nightclub. I don't know if you income won't be discounted. <laughs> you said why well, nobody wouldn't tell that on you yeah and all the live God and I'm not trying to make myself look like a saint but if you live for God the devil will lie on you amen, amen. amen. you said well now brother blue why don't you go get him straightened out that's the most foolish thing you've ever done in your life to try to straighten a lie out Oh, B.R. Lakin, B.R.'s gone to heaven. He said something one time, I never have forgot it, and I never understood it when he first said it. He said, if a devil tells something on you, he said, don't deny nothing. He said, don't deny it. I don't care what he tells, don't deny it. And I thought, my soul. <laughs> I don't make <think> sense. <laughs> and then he said what? He said, don't deny that. Because your real friends and the people of God won't believe it. Amen. And the enemies, I don't care how you're not, they're going to believe you anyway. Amen, Amen. 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 Well, we ought to come out for good things in that. Don't run it. You can't run a lie down. He'll go around the corner on you. Split up and be going both ways. Same time. Amen. 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 You say, well, now, Brother Blue, they're just saying something all the things about me. I don't know. I shut up. Just shut up. I told some folks I've had everything told on me except steal a nigger baby and paint me white. And I caught myself looking at one of them little rascals the other day in front of a paint store. <laughs> if you've been preaching six months and the devil hasn't told something on you, you're a compromiser, amen? Amen. 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 Just as, just, oh, David Hush. Just as sure as there's a God in heaven, if you take that peculiar definite stand for God, the devil's going to tell something on you. Amen. Amen. But he said endure persecution. Now notice in James 5, 11, he said something I like. He said, count them happy. <laughs> count 
they ever happen to endure. Am I preaching the truth? Amen. Well, now you're going to point your head. Amen. Amen, brother. Count them happy. James said, count them happy who endure. Amen. It ought to be a blessing to your heart to know that you're so living for God that the devil finds it necessary to do something to you. Amen. 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 That's right. Uh, nice God. So James said, "Tell that was happening." They whipped those boys and beat the blood out of their backs, and they went on their way rejoicing hey, that right. they was worth. Joy is 
Endure it. Put up with it. He said, I've lost my husband. Was he saved? Yeah. Well, he's in heaven. Anything you know where it's at, you ain't lost it. Oh, boy. Don't say I lost my little old baby. It's walking around in the flower garden. Right? You never lost it. You know where it's at. David said, I can't bring you back, but I can go through it. Oh, endure grief. They won't enjoy it. Just endure it. Hallelujah. Well, you said we ought to have an example, don't you think, preacher? Don't you think we ought to have an example? Well, I'll give you some, but let me give you another one. In Hebrews 12 and 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, Amen. who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. our perfect example. <laughs> he endured the cross, despised the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. He said, Preacher, I want to be a Christian, a real Christian. And there are some things you might want to find out now. It's not going to go As long as you live for God, I say, 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 I did you ever take really, Did you ever take a bucket lid off a large bucket? <laughs> huh? 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 Hey, no. 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 Hey,
dust kick gold dust all over. sinners that didn't understand it. There you are going mouthing off and telling what a hard time you're having. And James said, count them happy. What you do? Aren't you a little bit ashamed? I see that girl that come to the altar last night. Honey, you bless me. I prayed for you last night when I got to the motel. God strengthened you. Somebody come up here and get ready to leave the first two of that, would you? Somebody don't make no difference. Look up here at me. Look up here at me. If you're sitting here right now, you're alive. It's been nothing but a prayer of complaining. Sure, you have it rough, but you think you're the only one that has? You think you're the only one that goes about suffering and grief and pain's all about? God said there are some places you have to do a heart. You might as well find it out right now. You're going to have to put up with it. Play softly, sweetheart, would you please? And there's some of you right now to find your way to this altar. Some of you right now, you know you're just nothing in the world but an old loud mouth belly acre. Why don't you get on your knees and say, God, help me to endure some things. I just want to stand up and bear up under it. I want to tolerate it like a real Christian. I want to be what you would be pleased. And the Bible said, count them happy which endure. And there's some of you right now, while heads are bowed and eyes are closed and nobody looking around. 
I wonder would you raise your hand and say, Brother Blue, God sent that message to me. Thank you, darling. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. God bless you. Thank you, lady. Thank you, honey. Thank you. Th oh, God sent it to you, didn't he? But the thing about it is, what you going to do about it? What you going to do about it? God spoke to your heart. I wonder if there's somebody here who's never been saved, never have known the Lord. Would you raise your hand and say, pray for me? Pray for me, preacher. I need to get right with God. Wonder if there's an old backslider outside the will of God. Well, raise your hand and say, pray for me. Pray for me. Father, tonight every hand that went up, help them, God, to hit this altar and stay here till they got some things settled. They can go away and then realize they got to endure some things. Have your way, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together. God's devil, your heart wants you to come on right now. Come on, mind God. Let God have his way. Lead us in it, brother. Come on. Come on right now. Come on, mind God. If God's dealt with your heart, don't stand there. If God showed you some move you ought to make, make it. Make it right now. Come on. Come on right now. Come on. Come on right now. Sing another verse, brother. Just that. Come on right now. Come out of that seat right now. And say, God, I'm going to get on my knees. I'm going to get on my knees. Will you do it? Will you come right now? Come on, honey. That's a girl. Up here's a good spot. That's an awful good spot. Oh, I'm a God. I come. That's the way, dear. Come on. That's the way. Just mind God. Sing on. Have him sing it, folks. Wait just a moment. Never head bowed, never eye closed, never Christian breathe in a prayer to God. I'm honest, folks. There's a bunch of you here. Raise your hand. You haven't made a move. You want prayer, but you don't want really nothing done about it. Tonight, I'm not going to get hateful with you. I ain't going to do that. God wants to speak to your heart tonight. Why don't you come to the altar and say, Lord, give me something special. I don't want to, I don't want to go down through life being a complainer and a belly. I want to endure hardness. I want to endure some. If it's going to be my lot in life, I want to do it like a good soldier. Amen. I wonder right now, would you raise your hand again and say, Preacher, God did speak to my heart. God sent that message my way. I know it was for me. Would you raise your hand right now? Yes, yes, I see it. Yes, I see it. I see it. God bless your heart. God bless your heart. Now, don't stand there. God wants to do something for you. Remember last night, the message is what one person can do. God may want to take you and transform your life this week. While we sing another verse, another verse right now, I want you to come and get on your knees. I want to pray for you while we sing right now. Come on, come on, come on right there.
That's all right, brother. Dear friend, tonight, have you minded God? Have you been obedient to the Holy Ghost? You know, tonight, I believe with all my soul, David, God's going yeah. to give us revival. Yeah. This week. Now, I believe there's some folks kind of feeling a breath of revival. I'm honest about it. I do. But there's others will go out of here as dry as a shuck this week. But it's not going to be God's fault. And I know God's hand's been on me in this message tonight. I know that. I don't have to guess about it. I know God's been on me. I know that. I know that. Let me tell you something, dear folks. Don't you go around laying your coldness and your deadness off on God. Don't you go around blaming God for the shape you're in. No, sir. He, no, sir. Job said, though he slay me, I'll trust him. Though he slay me, I'm going to trust him. You said, why has God done me this way? Job said, though the dust worm eat me up, I'm going to see him in my flesh. Amen. Amen. A couple of little old girls over here praying. And I know it ain't going to bother them. Go ahead, Dave. Hey, you mind, God, would you, sir? Yeah. Brother David, I'd like to say something right now. Don't be near the rug. Go ahead, brother. Jump, God just filled me up. I got something I got to say. I'd like to say that I'm glad that I went to count. Amen. 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 God showed folks need to come. Some of you still need to come. Quit grieving and quenching the Holy Spirit. Tomorrow may be too late. Jesus could come tonight. You know, I'm not I'm not going to preach, but you know we're living the last days. There ain't, ain't no doubt about it. We're living in the last, the last of the last days. God has got Israel in their land. Amen. And the, the current world situation is nothing to be alarmed about for a child of God. Because it's, it's, it's just God setting the world, setting the stage for what is yet to come. God is in heaven. Now, Satan is the God of this world. Amen. But he can only operate on the end of God's rope. And God's just letting the devil set the world up and get it ready for what is yet to come on this world. And it, there's no better time in history to be a Christian than that. The last days. And it may be too late. It may be too late tomorrow. Jesus could come tonight. And somebody here needs to do business with God tonight. Don't put it off. You hear, you're, you're miserable. You're just absolutely miserable. Your heart is just a flying inside of you. And you feel uneasy. You know what that is? That's the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart. That's conviction. And you need to come tonight. Now. God said come now. And that's all you have is now. You may not have after a while. Come now. Now. Let's sing another verse. Away from God, Lord, I'm coming home. The paths of 
of sin Too long I've trod Lord, I'm coming home What about it tonight? Coming home, coming home Nevermore to know Open, amen I'm glad you come, young lady Amen Some of you ladies come and pray with her Amen, you find out she'd been saved Amen now, that, see, there's one that should have come. If somebody else ought to come tonight, God's speaking to your heart. And you just keep grieving and quenching the Holy Spirit. Why don't you be obedient and come? Let God do something for you. Let God do something for you tonight. Lord, I'm coming home. Coming home. Coming home. Nevermore to roam Open wide thine arms Bless you, young lady Amen God bless her heart I knew those others ought to come Listen, friend Listen to me tonight now, I'm going to say this again Now, God has impressed this on my heart We're living in the last days Now, Jesus is coming soon I, I, I believe that as much as I know I'm breathing. You know, Russia to the north is just perched like a bear, waiting to come south from the mountains of Israel. Trouble on the borders of Russia. And all of that trouble, the truth is known tonight. Every bit of that trouble can be laid in one place, and that's in the, the lap of the communists. They're just coming farther and farther south. You know why they're doing that? Because God said, I've got hooks in their jaws, and I'm pulling them down upon the mountains of Israel. God is working through that communist, godless, atheistic nation tonight, Russia. God's working through them. And God's bringing them down upon the mountains of Israel to fulfill Bible prophecy in the last days. Them Jews has been in the land since 1917, started going back. And God told Daniel 2,520 years before they ever started going back, God showed him with the fingers of a man's hand writing on the palace wall at Babylon. Said, Daniel, it'd be 2,520 years for them Jews start going home. And that was in 603 B.C. is when the times of the Gentiles began. And you subtract 603 B.C. from 2,520 years, you know what you're going to get? 1917. You know what happened in 1917? And Jews started going home. And God's yet to deal with Israel in the last days. And let me tell you something. When God gets through, gets ready to deal with Israel, he's through with the Gentiles. And it will be too late for you, my friend. You'll be left behind for the great tribulation. God will send a strong delusion on you that you should believe a lie and be damned because you receive not the love of the truth that you might be saved. And people tell me, I'll just wait till after the rapture, go into the tribulation. I won't receive the mark. I'll endure the end. That's, that's who's got to endure the end. Them folks that's left for the great tribulation. But the church won't go through one minute of Daniel's 70th week. We're not going to go through one minute of the great tribulation. God's going to call his church home in the glorious rapture. And you that are here tonight that's unsaved, you're going to be left behind. Now, if you're saved, you're going. If you're saved, you're going. You're going to go to the judgment seat of Christ. And the Bible says we're going to give an account of our deeds done in this body. And you're not just going to sail away home to pearly gates. You're going to stand before the Son of God and look Him in the face and tell it like it is. And you're going to give an account of your worldliness, your carnality, your, your slackness, your coldness, your indifference, your backslidings, turning your back on God, all those things. You're going to give an account of my friend, and you're going to be just like Lot. You'll have nothing left but a handful of ashes. God's going to try your works to fire, and the Bible says every man's works going to be tried by fire, and if your works abide, God's going to give you a reward. 
But if you suffer loss, the Bible says you'll lose your reward and you'll have nothing left, my friend, but ashes. Wood, hay, and stubble, it'll burn up nothing but ashes. I'd hate to go in empty-handed. Don't tell me you just want to make it in. I am going to make it in. I'm going to heaven. I know it. I know I'm going. I couldn't go to hell if I tried. I'm so saved it's pitiful. I can't go to hell if I tried. I'm going to heaven. Amen? They, I thought God's concern, I'm already in heaven. The Bible says he hath raised us up, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. As far as God is concerned, I'm already there. The Bible says whom he called, he justified, and those he justified, he glorified. And listen, friend, God's predestined me to be conformed to the image of his Son. The predestination is the work of God. I'm going to make it. But I'm going to the judgment seat, and I'm going to give an account of my works. I'm going to go in, but I don't want to go in empty-handed. You see, in Revelation chapter 5, verse 10, it says, They cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive honor and glory and power. Someday, if I have reward, I'm going to lay them at the feet of Jesus. And can you see some of these Christians go up there with a handful of ashes yeah. and lay them? That's why John said, Now, little children, abide in him, that you may have confidence and not be ashamed before him that is coming. Let me ask you a question seriously. If Jesus were to come tonight, could you stand before him unashamed? Paul talked about the judgment seat in 2 Corinthians 5. And he said in verse 10, we must all appear, appear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the things done in this body. The next verse, he said, therefore, knowing the terror of the Lord. The judgment seat of Christ is a terror. I dread it, don't you, Brother Baby? Yes, sir, Brother, I do. I dread the judgment seat. I dread standing before him and giving the count of my word. Don't you? Let me ask you one more question. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, we fix and turn you loose. Some of you in a hurry to get out of here. How many could stand before the Savior tonight and say, I wouldn't be ashamed? Can you raise your hand? Is there one? Is there, what about it? How many? How many couldn't?